I'm going to bring the cable around there. And you sound checks? Yeah. And hold on. For posterity. For posterior. <laughs> the other side of the camera. The I other like it. Me. <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Glenn Flaherty, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't, don't lean down. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can you hear me? Hi. You know, uh, my early life, I was a, a musician for 15 years, and then I decided to. Uh, and then I decided to end it all. <laughs> <laughs> what did you? Where's Scott? Uh, he just finished up a panel about the state of the game industry, and then he had a designer meeting. Got it. Sounds around. good. Yeah. Busy, busy. We got better things to do. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Way more important than learning about the game industry. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, we'll, we're good to go. All right, should I start talking? Did you press record? Oh, okay, great. All right, okay. One, two, three. All right. Hi, everyone. I, hi, Sarah. Hi, Glenn. Hi. How are you? I'm wonderful. I am Glenn, and this is Sarah. And we're old buds. Pound it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And so, oh, there's a camera. Uh, don't look at you. So, okay, so we're here at uh, PAX Unplugged, the first one, I believe. Ever. Ever. Yeah. And it has uh, over 40,000 attendants, which is quite amazing. And uh, Sarah's uh, taking some time out of her very busy day to show us some games. So uh, why don't you tell us about our first little one called Pie Town? So this is a worker placement game awesome. where you're baking pies. And oh. everybody loves pies, right? Of <laughs> Especially course. pecan pie. Oh, that's so good. We should go have that later. All right, good. Yeah. And, and uh, Will, our cameraman. Okay, yes. <laughs> um, but yes, this is about baking pies. And you start out with two workers in your bakery. And you send those workers to the orchard to collect ingredients. You take those ingredients back here. You send your workers to bake them. So there's a lot of different actions in your bakery that you can do. Upgrading yeah. it, making your workers better, hiring new workers. And all of that happens with these cool challenges chunky dice. These dice are so cool. I see like one here has like a, now it says one and that's a teapot. Three is a little uh, whisk. Is that on every die or? Yeah. So each one of your workers has six sides and those represent the level of that worker. So as they do more things in your bakery, they get experience and level up. So you start out with a level two and a level three worker. And if they go to the orchard, they'll get plus one. They learn some things about picking apples and these other delicious fruits. Mm -hmm. But if they spend time hiring another worker, that takes time out of their skill building. Right. And so they actually go down in levels. Okay. So they'll go down to level So there's a yin and yang to everything. You know, everything has a cost. It's like life itself. There's an inevitable cost to life that you can't avoid. This is a very deep game. We get to learn about life and yin yeah. and yang. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But we also get to learn about our opponents. So this game is a worker placement game and all that feels very familiar and comfortable, but it adds a social deduction aspect that I've never seen in a worker placement game like this before. So each one of us is going to start out with a little box with okay. our own special secret recipe in here because every good baker knows that Duh. you've got something a little special yeah. and you should keep that very close to your heart. In my case, it's cat hair. Oh, <laughs> I might have the same secret recipe as you. Yeah. That's surprising. <laughs> Um, so we will start off the game with a few of these ingredients in our secret recipe. And if, when you bake a pie to send to the bakery here to be sold, you can use that special recipe to get extra points. But if anyone else can figure out what ingredients you are using for your secret recipe, they can also bake your own pie. And, and then they get points as well. How, do, how is your secret recipe derived? So we each start out by picking a few ingredients from this bag. Okay. And those ingredients are going to be our secret oh, recipe. And only I know what's in it. I get to look and everything. Oh, very neat. But there are a few ways you can spy on your friends. Okay. So one way is that when you bake. Intriguing. I know, right? So when you bake a pie, you take all of the ingredients that you are using for all of the pies you're baking, you'll make several at a time, and show them to everybody. And over the course of the game, you might be able to figure out, well, every time they baked a pie, they had pumpkin in it. So that's probably one of their secret ingredients. 
And then you can also spy on your friends when they go to an orchard with a low level worker, you can send a higher level worker to the orchard to spy on them. The oh. difference in the levels is how many of their secret ingredients you get a peek at. Ah, okay. So let's say somebody figures out your secret. Well, that's no good. You've got to up your game. So you can always come to the pie convention and learn something new from the masters of the pie convention and then change your secret recipe. I that I think this little concept is pretty rad. It's very unique. It I've is unique. never seen anything like no. this before. This is from a first time designer. We found him at an unpub, which oh. are events that we really appreciate and love to go to. We first met at an unpub. We did. Very exciting. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> this is such an approachable topic too. Yeah, I you think know? pretty much anybody can feel like they relate to this game. And that's very important for us. Inclusivity in gaming is a huge deal, and so finding themes that appeal to everybody right. is pretty huge. And I don't know anybody who hates pie. So, I mean, I mean yeah. if you get a bake pie, you get a level up your workers, you can play nice. as all these different characters. I think that's very cool. What age range is this? So for? I would say this game is a little bit heavier than you would expect, maybe from the adorable artwork. It mm -hmm. is going to take a little bit of time. So anyone who can pay attention for you know half an hour, forty-five minutes would be able to play this game. Mm -hmm. On the box, we have ages fourteen plus. Right. I'm pretty sure that my like ten-year-old gamer nephew could play this, but I don't know about if you've never played games before. Right. You need the attention span. And that. on first of all. What I enjoy, um, let me also tell you, unsung heroes of the Renegade lineup, uh, Dicey Goblins. That is an excellent I game. I love that game. But neat little components, nice art. This one here has awesome art. I love the matte finish. And you know what I like too? I like the tactile feel. Definitely. Like I, I like the interaction of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like having it in my hands and then going through the motions of playing it. And okay, so now we're saying 14 and older. If we were to have like a, a BBG um, uh, complexity level, one to five, where would you put this? I would put this probably at like a two and a half or a three. So the oh, concepts are very simple, but it's not a kid's game by any means. Right. And I would even put this in like a slightly more of a gamer category. I think this would be a great introduction mm -hmm. to worker placement games, mm -hmm. to a little bit of light social deduction. Um, there's nothing concept-wise here that's going to be really difficult to grasp, mm -hmm. but it's going to take a little bit more. This is a heavier game than you would think right. it is. And you know, heavy does not mean uh, complicated. Not at all. Yeah. So, well, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. And I love these other little tidbits we got going on, right? Oh, yes. So this is a round marker. You've got a little uh, rolling, rolling pin, pin to keep track. So cool. And then this is going to be your start player token. That's awesome. Well, I love it. So we have Pie Town here, but we thought, what goes really well with pie? I have no idea. Ice cream. Oh, you're so right. Ice cream is perfect Why didn't I think about that? So we also created a game that came out just a few weeks ago. That's called Sunday Split. And this game, you really can play with almost anybody. This is a fantastic, easy, family, light filler game. Um, but it's got some really good choices in it. They're super fun and some surprise. I choices like are the key. It, it's, you know, exactly. You don't yeah. want a choice. You don't even necessarily want a choice that is nearly optimal. You want to really think, I really don't know what to do. Yeah. And I love suspense in games. Like, we've had great success with Clank because there's this moment of suspense when you pull the cubes out of the bag and you don't know if you're going to take damage or not. Right. And then when you see those cubes and it's your opponents or your friends, it's just exciting. Yeah, yeah. And so in Sunday Split, there's a little bit of that too where you have cards that you're trying to make a wonderful Sunday out of. Right. And if it's my turn, I'm going to draw some cards, I'm going to choose to put them in piles and some of those cards are face down and then you pick a pile and then I'll pick a pile. So you don't know what you're going to get because some cards are face down and some are face up. So you try and pick the pile that looks like Best? There's so there's a little bit of a gamble. Yeah. I love the I love the fog of war. I'm not knowing mm -hmm. the unknown. I love that part of the game. I love when you're you're just taking a risk and going for it, you know? I love that quality. A little push your luck is always exciting. Awesome. And that's why Dicey Goblins is great too. That yeah. push your luck of I don't know what I'm gonna roll. Very exciting. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, that is great. Anything else to share? Or? Uh, this is some of our new stuff. We have a ton of new stuff coming out. Yeah, you do. Um, I can already see some of the titles and things that I 
didn't even know until I came here. Yeah, Planet Defenders is absolutely brand new at this show. We yeah. haven't had that before. We have really cute robot miniatures in it, and miniatures are something we're just starting to explore, so that's oh, yeah. very exciting for us. Um, we also have Kepler, which we haven't had yes. at a show. It just came out at Essen, right. just barely. Right, about it. And that's a little bit more complexity. You have a tech tree, and you're exploring, and there's mm -hmm. all this stuff to grab onto that's very cool and different. So, yeah, we're, we've got a lot going on. I... I really enjoy where it's growing because when we started we were at like kitty paw yeah <laughs> you know and so we've really you know grown okay can i ask you some questions i love questions let's all right. do it all right let's see where at. now i have my little cheat sheet of paper here awesome. will we still doing well okay nice. that's okay <laughs> will will is our our uh, our third party of this party here all right well first i was going to say how's the dog Oh, she's wonderful. I remember watching your videos of you playing with the dog and like teaching it to you tricks. That was my favorite. Yeah, she's um, fun. <laughs> recently, I saw your cat. Almost all your cat. <laughs> and a little bit of you in a photo. Yep, yep. How's your cat doing well? Oh, Still alive? he's 18 years old. Oh my so, gosh. And he's doing surprisingly well. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, we just moved to a new house and we have cool. stairs now we didn't have before. And I don't know if you've ever seen cats on stairs, mm. but there's a special connection there that I don't understand, but what he's very it? excited. They just love stairs. Really? Like going up it? Do they like falling down and sliding? Running up and down quickly and then sitting on a stair and attacking everything that comes near that particular stair. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know why, but it's very fun. Uh, my cat uh, likes, has this connection. Like when he uses the litter box, it likes to go meow and then do, do like laughs. <laughs> That's what my cat likes it's to do. It's just so exciting. It is, you know? <laughs> I mean, don't we all feel like a weight's been lifted off your shoulders? Okay, seriously though, uh, how do you get work done when you can't see your computer screen because the cat's in the way? It's very difficult. It is I have difficult. to have lots of tricks and the special things I do, like feeding him all the time. <laughs> and it's like, does your cat meow in the middle of the night? No. Oh, you have such a good cat. He's a Siamese, but uh, yeah, no, not in the middle of the night. Mine chooses like 3 a.m. to go, wow, or you know, something crazy. Among video reviewers, who is your favorite named Glenn? <laughs> uh, well, obviously, board games and bourbon. Well, I would so... never take that for granted, <laughs> but thank you. That's so nice of you. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to ask you some thank you. I'm going to ask you, these are generic questions. So we're also doing uh, questions for a casual game and say. Okay, generic questions. Okay. If your company was a drink, well, maybe this is the board games and bourbon. Oh, okay. If your company was a, a drink, what kind of drink would it be? This is kind of like the dating game. Hey. It is. No. It is. Uh, so I don't know a lot about drinks. Is there one that's like minty and fresh? Uh, a, a mint julep? Oh, a mint julep? Yeah, that would be Sweet. good. A cappuccino? Refreshing. There you go. You're like, yeah, you really pull that one out of the hat. <laughs> Um, okay, so what are your thoughts on PAX Unplugged as the newest addition to the convention circuit? So very seriously, I am so happy to be here because this is a lot of people that are on the fringe of our experience in gaming. And so we've seen this huge revolution in having amazing board games that are really breaking out of our cottage industry. And now they're getting exposed to people who never even knew that board games were a fun thing to do as an adult. And so we have a ton of people walking around this room right now who are just learning about this amazing thing that they can do every evening with their friends that they never knew about before. Because PAX has its own fan base, and right. so they love video games. Oh, and they're crossover. pulling in a totally different crowd than any of the other amazing amazing board game conventions that currently exist. That's an interesting point. So I'm I, super excited about that. I felt like the, the ticket price was so low that people could just attend without much of a barrier, but I never thought about the crossover. That's pretty good. Very cool. And the number of people, 40,000 you said. Well, so 23,000 unique people right. are here, and they have room to grow there. Okay. So that's amazing. They were they were shooting for you know up to about oh, 40,000 people was I their see. max that they could handle this year, okay. and 23,000 people is I mean, that's really huge yeah. because a lot of the other conventions we're looking at like. You think about Gen Con, they're at, I think, 72 this oh, year. My goodness. Wow. And then Origins is somewhere in the like 17 to 20,000 people. That is amazing. So, that in and, year one, this yeah. already is up there. And so we know that a lot of those people are people who either haven't ever been to a board game convention before or don't usually attend all these right. other ones. So this is a huge deal for us to get to expose this 
community to what we love. And you're so prominent. You're so you're so easy to talk to, and you're so accessible. <laughs> what a friendly face to be front and center when people walk through the door. Now I'm, I'm sure that's not by accident, <laughs> but it's a wonderful, you know, welcoming thing for everyone who's coming. Well, I think that's a responsibility that we have as current gamers in the industry. Like we want be more good people. Shepherds. Absolutely, we want more people here because we can't play games by myself every time. There are a few solo play games, but for the most part, I'm here to play games because I like being face to face with fun people. That's true. So the more people I can bring into the industry, the better. And yeah. I think all the publishers here feel that way. So yeah. we're here supporting this thing. The human to human contact. Yeah, because it matters. I agree. I agree. Okay, okay, let's see what else we can talk about here. Um, how many conventions do you attend per year? Oh, that's a scary question. <laughs> So let's, there's kind of two different sides of this industry. So there's the consumer focused side. So we have Origins, Essen, Gen Con, PAX Unplugged, BGG Con, and then I went to Grand Con this year, which was a great experience, a few other smaller ones. But those are the ones I've attended this year. And then we also have the industry side of this. So all of our distributors host open houses so that retailers can come and find out about our games so that they can then be good shepherds to their communities and teach them about what we've got. So we have uh, about three to four different uh, uh, open houses that we go to. Then also Gamma is a very important oh, right. event for us. It's a game manufacturers association meeting where all the retailers, all the publishers come together in Nevada every year and learn from each other. We do lots of seminars, teaching. Right. Just Even here you're giving lectures. And, you know. Yeah, we just all want to be a good community together and Busy make everybody schedule. grow. So I have attended all of those this year and then plus a few other little meetings and things that we go to. We did a fantastic event for Just Renegade at uh, Scott Gaeta's house this year. Oh. Scott Gaeta is the president of Renegade and we went down there for a week and we just played a ton of prototypes because he gets so many submissions it's hard for him to go through them alone. Yeah. So a group of us went down there together played a bunch of prototypes, and that's actually how we found Pie Town and another... And Dave's, right? Uh, um, plans. Which one? Of Caladale. Oh, Castles of Caladale, we yeah. found it in Unpub. Actually, oh. the Unpub I met at you oh, at. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, neat. So, okay. um, so we've uh, met a lot of great people at these different Unpubs and brought a, a few of those games to his house, so I went there for a week and did oh, that yeah. as well. So there's a ton of things I travel for. Right. I'm gone for about a week every month, and mm. thank goodness my husband puts up with it. <laughs> right. Wow. Yeah. Very understanding, especially when you you know it's hard to be away from your loved ones, you know. But and so frequently. Yeah. But you know. But it's, it's a, good. It, I yeah, get to see the community a lot, which it's is for love. Yeah. So it makes it. Um, okay. So, last question. Basically, I have very specific wording here. Okay. Basically, going to these conventions is touring your product for exposure. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like what rock bands used to do to promote records. Absolutely. Do you see yourself as the next traveling Wilburys? I don't know who that is. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> right. But I do think you're absolutely right. This is just like a rock concert because we're showing off the absolute brand new cutting edge yeah. stuff that nobody's seen before and we get to meet with our fans, we get to have these How conversations rewarding. with them. It's fantastic because we spend so much time <laughs> Scott <laughs> Gaten's <Gaiden's glaring. laughs> We get to spend so much time in front of our computers, uh, just working hard every single day. Yeah. And that wouldn't be worth it if I didn't know that at the end of that I get to come and meet the media and the fans and all our publishing yeah. partners and everybody else that we work so with. So what is he around? All right, he left. <laughs> I was going to go drag him in, ask him about his whiskey of the month. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. You are a great orator. Thank you. And I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, sure. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. That's Sarah. Renegade. We'll talk to you soon. Oh, and the name of the game? Pie Town and Sunday Split. See ya. Cool. Thank you so much. That was super fun.